Hi everyone, I'm Steve Cupid and this video tutorial is all about the embouchure and the lips. I'm hoping to be able to give you some ideas, some food for thought and things that you can sort of test out for yourself, experiment with so that you can discover what works best for you. One of the most important things to say about the embouchure is that we're all different. We've all got different shaped lips, tongue, teeth and it's really hard to generalise. So what works really well for one player might not necessarily work well for everyone. So we all need to be engaged in a little bit of testing and experimenting and discovering for ourselves what works best for us. So first question I'm gonna sort of pose is, what are the lips for? What, what purposes do they serve in flute playing? So the main thing that our lips do is they change the angle of the air. They can die, they can move, they need to be flexible, they need to be supple. Um, I've already talked in a separate video about embouchures that are too tight, especially at the sides here. So if you have problems with tightness, rigid, rigidity here, maybe a bit of a smiley, pulling back kind of embouchure. I've made a separate video, which I recommend you, you look at. I'm not gonna talk more about that here. So, directing the air down into the flute, raising the air stream so that it comes further up, that's one of the most important things that the lips does. It's really important because it adjusts or enables us to adjust intonation. So if we're playing quiet notes and diminuendoing, we need to be able to raise the air because otherwise the note will go flat. If we're playing really loudly, we might need to get the air more into the flute to avoid being sharp. So the bottom lip is the easiest one to manoeuvre really because the jaw is so flexible. The jaw really can move backwards and forwards a long way. I like to think of it as a, as a draw that you can pull in and out. It's really, it moves backwards and forwards as well as up and down. So there's so much sort of movement available to us but in the jaw that can help us move our bottom lip. The top lip can also come over more to help us get more air into the flute if that's what we're trying to do. And it can also be lifted if we're, if we're getting the air too far down or if we're sort of biting down on the air or if that sounds too hard. Often that can be a result of the top lip doing a bit too much and it just needs to be lifted away from the airstream and not holding on so much. So, um, one of the really best exercises that we can be engaging in in our practice are note bending exercises. Um, there are some great videos on YouTube of Denis Boryakov showing these, so if you haven't seen them I would recommend you just type in Denis Boryakov note, note bending and you'll find his two videos, one follows the other. But I'll give a brief demonstration here. So with note bending we can start with the air for example really high By using the bottom jaw and the bottom lip and the top lip, I'm raising and lowering the airstream. And that shows me a lot of things. It shows me the, the amount of pitch variation that I'm able to achieve. It helps me to keep my embouchure nice and soft so that I can move the air up and down. So it helps me to avoid any tension here. Um, there's also a point when you go up and down where you sort of hit in the middle a kind of sweet spot where all of the harmonics in the sound are really resonating together. So. And then you can go too far and you've gone past it. 
again, I've got a separate video on what is what to do with a harmonics and tune sound. So if you're not sure about that, check that video out instead. But I do use in that video note bending, uh, moving the airstream up and down as a way of really finding where the harmonics are resonating the most and the sound is the most resonant. Um, another thing that we use the lips for then is to change tone colour. So we can change tone colour in a variety of ways. First of all, we can think about the shape of the aperture that we have in between the lips. A rounder shape will make normally a more hollow, open, warm sound and a round aperture is especially, if you're working to achieve a round aperture, I would start with an ooh, ooh shape, sort of vowel shape. If I was starting to work on that, I'd work in the bottom octave and I'd be trying to create an oo round shape and a hollow sound to start with. So I'd be the absolute opposite of something that's really focused. It needs to have a core, it needs to have a centre, but the lips can be quite soft, not too dense, and the aperture shape nice and round and oo shaped. Um, if I wanted to focus the sound more, introduce more sort of upper harmonic partials. I might go for a more oval shape, so more elliptical, and I might make the lips as well firmer or more denser. So that can go from ooh, shape but still being careful not to use the sides here to create the oval shape. All of the work should be happening with the muscles in the centre, not the muscles at the side of the lips. If I want to add even more focus to that, instead of, I, I would go for an E, an E vowel shape. So E lifts the back of the tongue and makes the passage of the air directly to the lips um, more quickly, more direct. So we've got ooh. Another little trick for firming up the sound and making it more focused with the lips is to use the bottom lip more. So if you put your fingertip in the middle of your bottom lip and pretend that you're going to whistle, you'll feel all the little muscles right in the centre of the bottom lip. A similar sort of feeling can be achieved if you imagine you're just going to kiss somebody on both cheeks. The, the muscles here get activated, they come forwards, at least that's what I feel, and it gives you firmer lips that help to create a more focused colour. Um, another thing about the lips that's really important when we're talking about colour is the size of the aperture. So if we have a smaller hole between our lips, that will make the air come out faster. Um, and that also introduces more harmonics, more partials into the colour. So to, to help you sort of imagine this, if you, this was a suggestion from um, Thies Ruder, who is Professor of Flute at the Royal Conservatoire of The Hague. He said, imagine you've got a garden hose. It's got nothing on the end, it's just open. You turn the tap halfway on and the water pours out, but it's not very strong. Without doing anything to the water pressure, so you don't ch change anything to do with the tap, so the amount of water stays the same, the speed of the water is coming out of the tap at the same um, sort of volume and pressure, but you squeeze the end of the garden hose, the squeezing effect makes the air come out faster and makes the pressure build up behind. So we can use that same effect with our, with our aperture. If we make it smaller, the air will come out faster if we don't change anything else. Um, obviously we could slow the air down as well, so we can, we can play with that. But that, if you just sort of 
in general, smaller aperture will create a faster airstream which will add harmonics to your sound. Um, I also sometimes like to think about more depth in the aperture here and that's dropping the jaw. And there are lots of different ways um, that we can think of doing that. We can use vowel shapes like or and ah. Oh. We can imagine having an object in our mouth like an egg or a hot potato. <laughs> Um, another one of TC's ideas was to imagine you have sideburns that grow and as they grow the jaw comes down. So lots of things we can do with the lips to change our tone colour. Um, when I was working with Geeta Markerson, who's flute professor at the Royal College of Music, she was very keen to talk about the idea of your lips moulding the sound and sculpting the sound and shaping and refining the sound and doing the same to the air, that the lips sculpt the air, they mould the air, they shape the air. And with that idea in mind, we can really use the lips to finesse our sound and to create nuance in our expression, which I think is a really good way of approaching the way we use the lips not just from a technical sort of viewpoint but also from a musical and an expressive viewpoint um, so things that you can I've already mentioned a few things that you can sort of ideas that you can play with you can think about the object in your mouth the size different vowel shapes um, in other videos I've talked about flaring the nostrils for me at least I don't know if it works for you you'll have to check if I flare my nostrils there's a connection here and my top lip just slightly lifts. Um, and if I'm really working on my embouchure, the final thing that I do is I use nose breathing rather than mouth breathing. Obviously, every time we breathe through the mouth, we disturb the embouchure and then we need to go back and reform it. So if I'm really working and I don't want to do that in my playing, I'll take a bit of extra time Breathe in through the nose, really deep breaths, allowing the air as it comes in through my nose to open the nasal passages, hit the back of the throat, cold air hitting the back of the throat, lifts the soft palate, opens the back of the throat, and I encourage the air to go all the way down, right down to the diaphragm, so that everything's as open and relaxed as possible, and then my embouchure is not disturbed. So regardless of the shape, regardless of the size, I can maintain all of that and then I can just breathe in through the nose and continue with what I was doing. Obviously, long term, we have to breathe through the mouth, so we have to get good at knowing where our embouchure is, opening the lips a little to breathe and reforming the embouchure quickly. And that takes practice. Um, and listening is crucial to that. If you've had a really good quality of sound before you take a breath and then you breathe, it's really important that we listen to make sure that we, we go straight back to that same great quality that we just left before the breath. If, if we don't manage that, then we need to be thinking about why. And it could be embouchure, it could be air, air speed and air pressure after the breath, it could be that we've made accidental or unintentional changes inside the mouth, the position of the tongue might have moved. There are, there are a whole variety of things that could be impacting. Anyway, I hope that you find this video useful. Um, if you want to see other videos that I've made, you can visit my website www.theflutekit.com and there's a page with lots of video tutorials on. So happy practicing, good luck, and if you've got any comments, please do sort of let me know in the comments um, section here what, any questions you've got, any observations you have, or things you'd like to say, maybe to add to the, to the broader, broader conversation. Thanks for listening, bye.